Okay, like Mr. Crane said, my name is Krista Haas. I'm a sophomore at Campbell High School, and I'm gonna tell you a story. It's a story of a normal, everyday girl, like the ones you see day to day in school, like the ones in the audience here. She's not particularly different. She doesn't sit out in a crowd, but she's she is different. Why? She's not very good at sports. She doesn't necessarily get better grades than average, but the difference is she's got a dream. It's not the kind of dream you'd expect someone like her to have. She's quiet, sits inside reading or writing like all the time. She's not something you expect to be outside getting her hands dirty, but it's exactly what she wants to do. She wants to be an archaeologist, which is sitting outside getting your hands dirty. She knows it's not necessarily a cushy profession. It's not sometimes as muddy or dusty as it may seem. You have to get in your hole and do some digging. It's kind of like life, if you think about it. You have to deal with whatever comes your way. And she wants, I want, to be in that hole. It's my dream, and I forgot where I was. And I want to learn about the past through more than just textbooks. I want to be able to touch things that haven't had human contact for hundreds, even thousands of years. Another girl, 7,000 miles away from us here in Pennsylvania, had a dream too. Her name is Malala Yousafzai, and her dream is education. Her country, not, not all girls, are allowed to go to school. She said that, she, okay, I don't mind if I have to sit on the floor at school. All I want is education, and I'm afraid of no one. Um, <laughs> there are forbidden classes over there, which is why Mal Malala was so outspoken, why she's so well known in the world net right now. 36% of women and girls in Pakistan can read or write. That's less than half. A look around you. Imagine that out of every 10 people in this room, only four of them could read. It's pretty insane especially when you compare it to the averages in the 90s here. Almost everyone can read and write. Do you know anyone, not including little kids, who can't read, honestly? Yet, in Pakistan, almost everyone knows someone who can't read, and that's if they can read themselves. Malala spoke out for better education, for chances. She wanted to be a doctor. But for her dream and for her speaking out, she was targeted and shot by the Taliban on her way to school one day in early October. Um, the Taliban were so threatened by a teenage girl speaking out for her dreams and for education, for equal rights for everyone, that they felt the need to shoot her. <sighs> Luckily, she's okay now. There's a lot of hope centered around her. Pakistan rose up in protest, maybe they got the courage from what people did to an innocent girl. The United Nations started a worldwide day in her honor and also launched a campaign, an education campaign for girls, entitled Aya Malala. Her school, the one she was going to when she was shot, was renamed in her honor. And there's a million dollar bounty on the heads of the Taliban. Um, these people are forbidden our education, but we're required to go to school until we're 16. It's not just something the government makes us suffer through so they look good to other countries. It's got a purpose. And I know you've heard this probably a hundred times from parents and teachers, but I'm going to say it again because it's true. The better educated you are, the better you have of getting and holding a job, the better income you can get, the more you can provide for your families, and for females in particular the more representation we can get in our government, the more respect we can get. We have more say in our world and in our lives. We can change the world for everyone, including men. Maybe they don't want to admit it, but sometimes they do need a little bit of female perspective, just get a different look on things, get a different look on things, look at all aspects of the decision. Because sometimes there are things that they don't always see, and maybe we do. And maybe we don't see the same things they do. Who knows? Our perspective 
maybe it's not, it's not hugely different anymore, because we've almost, we've pretty much equal opportunities, but there can be a difference. But so much of our curriculum, so much of what we're exposed to now is male, plus point of view. So far in English class this year, we've read books by only male authors. Jeffrey Chaucer, uh, William Golding, Jeffrey Chaucer, and collection of shorter stories and sonnets by male authors. There are a few notable exceptions. Um, the Bronte sisters, Jane Austen, and Harper Lee. Most schools include To Kill a Mockingbird in their curriculum, and I know my English class this year is reading one of the Bronte sisters, Jane Eyre. And don't we normally think of math and science as men's fields, and English and literature are more female fields? Most English teachers, with the exception of Mr. Crane, are female. I think that's all I've had so far. Um, but literary greats, Dickens, Arthur Conan Doyle, J.M. Barrie, Lewis Carroll, I don't have slides for them, but Mark Twain, Nathaniel Hawthorne, Hawthorne Ray Bradbury, Shakespeare, George Orwell, John Keats, the list goes on and on. Almost all the greats are male. Sure, we have people like Frances Hudson Burnett and Louisa May Alcott, but they're so greatly outnumbered by their male counterparts. Out of 50 classics that I have on my Kindle, 40 of them are by male authors. Luckily for us, there have been an increase in female authors in past, in past years. Um, there are many books that are either by female authors, feature strong female characters, or both on the market today. A good example is Hunger Games, because it's so popular right now. How many of you have read Hunger Games? That's a good percentage of the group. It's by a female author, Suzanne Collins, and Katniss might not be perfect, but she's not presented as weak or less willing to fight because she's female. She didn't even have to go into the games. She volunteered, which is a good example of the virtue of chivalry, which is normally connected with males and specifically knights in armor. Another ex example is In Front of Vices by Cassandra Clare. Um, the main character, Tessa, she, it's set in Victorian times, and Tessa breaks many gender stereotypes to help her friends, um, such as women weren't, couldn't be fighters when they were pretty much good for nothing, except you know, sitting at home, tending, tending the house, that kind of thing. Um, Maximum Ride is not by a female author. However, Max, winged girl, <laughs> is a leader of her flock, her, her family, pretty much. And she's a fighter through and through. There's an excellent quote from the series that illustrates this. Max said, I don't damsel well. Distress I can do. Damseling, not so much. Mortal Instruments series, also by Cassandra Clare. Main character, Clary, fights for her family her friends, and people she, the person she turns out to be. She's a huge part in what's basically a war. And one of her best friends had a quote that pr pretty much illustrates, someone else asked, is this where you tell me that, is this where you tell me that if I hurt her, you'll kill me? And her friend replies, if you hurt Clary, she's quite capable of killing you herself, possibly with a variety of weapons. And finally, all of Tamora Pierce's books feature strong female characters. She was quoted as saying, girls represent 50% of the population. They deserve to represent 50% of the heroes. Becca Cooper series, the one that I chose, is a really good example because in second and third books, Becca has to deal with the rising call, it's called the call of the gentle mother. And basically the girls are told that they can't fight, they can't do anything dangerous. But Becca's working as what's called a dog. It's like a police officer. So she's blatantly going against that. <laughs> but with the exception of the Hunger Games, 
these aren't particularly read often, especially in people that I know. Um, maybe just because they're not, no, not everyone reads them, so they're not getting passed around as much. Um, maybe they don't, maybe people don't want to say, oh, they, you can do things for yourself. Or, or maybe they don't want to think, oh, it's heavier, it's telling me this kind of thing. I want to read something fluffy, which is nice every once in a while, but not always. Um, Twilight's really popular with girls our age, possibly because of the love story, paranormal romance thing. But face it, Bella's pretty useless. <laughs> she basically lets the men do all the work. I'm sorry if any of you like Twilight, but it's true. You can't really deny it. Um, people, this is what people like. I think maybe it's because it's fluffy, it's cute, it's a love story. And maybe, not necessarily, but maybe what they take away is, hey, it worked for her, like the guys all the work. Maybe it'll work for me too. Not really. The real world doesn't work like that, and if it does, it shouldn't. You could argue it's fantasy. They won't get that from it. Every single one of those books that I put up were either sci-fi or fantasy. And what I got from them is that I should be my own hero, do things on my own. I can't do it alone, of course. I have some awesome friends in the audience right now. Katniss had her team of supporters. Tessa had her friends, Jem and Will. Max, her flock, who was her family, and she would do anything for them. Clary, friends both old and new. And Becca had her partners and her purple-eyed constellation cat. According to Virginia Woolf, female authors have been prevalent for a lot longer. She said, for most of history, Anonymous was a woman. Maybe we don't have tangible evidence, evidence that I can dig up in the field, for example. But through all of history, women have been fighting to be heard, Try, even writing things anonymously. Now, we can stand up, like I'm doing now, and give them a voice. Cry out everything they've been fighting to say through the centuries. Maybe we can't all be like Malala, get it, who because we don't have those rules that say we can't do it. Maybe we're not willing to risk our lives the way she did, and we don't have to to make a difference. But we can and we should speak up and try and make a change in the world. Because if one more girl every day can learn to read and write, that's almost 400 a year. That's thousands of girls over the years. And that's enough to make a difference. We can all make a difference. And literacy, like, <sighs> literacy and through empowering your dreams, that's one way to do it. Thank you. Thank you.